In this video, I wanted to show you the best Google Chrome extensions and some tricks that will ease your life as a software tester and web developer. The last one is going to be unbelievable. Stay until the end of the video to find out what it is and how to use it. Hey masters, welcome back to Drunk Media. Welcome back to another excellent video. Um, well, let me know in the comment section if you would like to see more extensions that can be useful for you. And also let me know if you want to, well, if you want me to explore other kind of extensions from tricks in other web browsers like Firefox, Opera, Mozilla, I don't know, other web browsers. Let me know in the comment section, okay? The very first extension that I wanted to show you is the window resizer. This particular extension is pretty useful because sometimes you need to make sure that the website looks good and according to the layout on different dimensions and resolutions. This particular extension makes easy to change from a desktop view to a, I don't know, an iPad view with a simple action. Um, this is an emulation, but it is an emulation that can be useful for you okay so let's review how we can use it and and how it can install this in your web browser okay guys let's review how we can use the window resizer in real life okay uh, over here you have to only click on get it from the chrome web store if you want to install it right but uh, when you have this installed you have to visit this button right the extensions button and you're gonna look for the extension in this case window resizer you click on that and you're gonna see this pop-up over here uh, that have like different presets right we have a preset for iPhone 5 or iPhone 6, an iPad, right? And basically is going to emulate the, the resolution of an iPad, right? Changing the, the width and the height of the web browser. So if you click on this one, you're going to resize the web browser according to the preset that we have. That's amazing, right? And pretty interesting. Um, if you want to configure or actually customize this extension, you can do it. If we come here to the window resizer and we change or actually click on this settings button you're gonna see that we have a presets uh, option in the left uh, menu that allows us to drag and drop the position of different presets and that's a pretty is interesting you can edit it right you can change the description of it the name the the and different icons if you want to right um, and it's gonna depend on on what preset are you uh, creating right if it is a mobile one an iPad a laptop or a desktop you can change the the the, the, the icon here uh, and also you can create your own presets so this is pretty interesting it could be useful sometimes if you want to do some kind of quick test and emulate a, 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 a scenario the second extension that i wanted to show you is this one bug magnet basically this extension is meant to be a kind of assistant in Google Chrome or Firefox in order to ease the, the way you can do exploratory testing because uh, when you right click, for example, in the body of the form, you can automatically generate a, no, a Lauren Ibsen uh, text that you can send, right? Or if you need to enter uh, the name in a form, you can generate automatically some kind of problematic values, some problematic names that uh, are pretty known that could cause an issue all right guys let's continue with the bug magnet the the extension that i told you that can automatically generate data right so let's go ahead we have a, a website here called demoqa.com text box and um, this uh, this is website is pretty interesting because uh, it is going to help us to emulate different test scenarios like text box, check boxes, radio buttons, web tables, and so on, right? But in this case, if we click on the text box um, a scenario, you're gonna see that here we can enter a full name, an email, a current address, and a permanent address if you want. Um, let's imagine that you want to enter some edge cases about full names, right? Enter some weird values in the full name, um, text box so you can do it just right clicking on that particular input and you're gonna look for the bug magnet option in the contextual menu and you're gonna see that here we can um, 
actually choose, for example, a Lauren, right? If you want to enter Chinese data, you can do it. That's very interesting. If you want to enter Sichuan or, I don't know, Arabic one, Chinese ones, there, there is pretty interesting because you can enter a lot of stuff, right? But in this case, we have an option called names and you can enter, for example, a Latin chart set. You have different name options here. That's very interesting, right? Or if you want to enter an unusual accents or characters, you can do it. And if you want to enter a Japanese name, you can do it. You're gonna see a name in Japanese here and you're gonna be able to do it as, as, as soon as you want, right? It's pretty interesting and useful. You can enter also emails, weird emails with this. We have email addresses valid and invalid. So we can make sure that, for example, if we enter uh, um, an email with without at, it should, well, if the form is validated, right, <laughs> it should have or actually tell us that there is no an, an at in, in the email address, right? But it is very interesting and useful sometimes. And while well, in the address, we can enter, I don't know, maybe um, Lauren Ibsen using Arabic uh, uh, actually syntax, right? So you can do it as well in the permanent as address, entering, I don't know, maybe a Lauren with Chinese data and this is pretty useful because when we submit the text well in this case it is actually validating the, the the email you can see that it is not valid so i'm gonna enter a valid email in this particular form right i'm gonna come here to the buck magnet and i'm gonna enter a valid email over here um a simple one and as soon as I click on submit, you're going to see the different value and data in the in the response. And that's good. That could be a, a very useful case for using bug magnet, right? It could be pretty useful. The third extension is this one wave evaluation tool. What it is basically this extension is going to help us to evaluate the accessibility level in our website. It is going to provide a visual feedback about the accessibility in your website. It is going to inject some icons and information in our website to tell us what is wrong and what could be improved. This is very important because all the analysis is happening in the web browser. There is no um, kind of security breach. There, there is not a, a information sending to the to the well this particular extension website, right? It is totally safe, and you can apply this test. Uh, in every single web page without thinking or worrying about the security of it, okay? All right, guys, now that we have installed Wave in our Chrome, you can um, create a report, a, an accessibility report of what is wrong, what could be improved in our website, just clicking on the extension when it is already installed, okay? I'm gonna click here on Wave of Evaluation Tool, and you're gonna see that we have now a report over here telling us the different errors, contrast errors, alerts, features that are correct, and also other um, information about our website in terms of accessibility. As you can see uh, I, as well in, in the UI, it has injected some uh, icons telling us what is wrong and what is right. You can see that, uh, for example, this icon here means in the details of the error, probably that the language is missing or invalid. Probably the HTML doesn't have the correct um, language, right? Or it, it is not specified. If we click on this tooltip, you're gonna see what it means, right? Why it matters, how to fix it actually, right? You're gonna see that probably we need to set the HTML language tag, right? So we can ensure that the, the attribute valids are valid. Um, but as well, we have other ones like this one. You can see that basically this error is that this uh, image doesn't have an alternative text. It doesn't have the, the attribute at alt, right? And the value that it requires, right? Also, uh, we have other uh, issues here, like a contrast error in this button. Let me show you. Probably the text or the button um, should be in other color to have a very, con very actually a good contrast, not a very low one, and it is a, an interesting suggestion. And also we have an alerts uh, issues here, or actually, I don't know, maybe it doesn't have a, a heading structure correctly, there is no script element, and, and as well other um, interesting stuff here that, that you can use, and it is pretty useful, right? It is just a quick overview, but 
you can install it and try it by yourself, okay? The next extension that I wanted to show you is this one, check, link. check my links. A common scenario is that you need to check if all the links in the website are correct and are not broken. So this link is gonna have actually facilitate how we can detect when a link is not working correctly. So well, with this saying, and obviously thinking that automating this with a script is obviously better, but in case you don't have an automation team and you don't have the, the ability right now to automatically generate how to check all the links in the website, this extension is gonna help us a lot, okay? I do have this website uh, in Tools QA, and um, if you check in the elements dropdown, we have here an option called broken links and images. And if I click on broken links, you're gonna see two links here, one valid and one broken. Basically, uh, when we click on the broken link, what is gonna happen is that if we check the network um, request, right, it is gonna be a 500 status code. And well, of course, it is a, a broken link <laughs> um, signal, right? A sign, actually. So uh, I wanna make sure that, uh, that the extension works. So I'm gonna come here in the extension part, I'm gonna click on check my links, and you're gonna see a green uh, kind of background when the valid link is, is displayed, but when it is not, you can see here the error message here, the 500, right? And also we have a red background uh, under the, or actually behind the text. That's how it works and it is pretty interesting, right? If you are, if you have a large website with a lot of links, this could be pretty useful, useful to, to understand what is happening. And also at the, at the right, as you can see, we have the links results with different, the, the links validated and also the invalid links. Also we have a warnings part and, and so on, but it, it is interesting, right? I think that it is pretty useful when, when you have to do manual tests or if you wanna make sure that or I don't know, maybe a quick test, right? You just have to come here, check the, the links with this extension and, and it is gonna uh, take you like one minute to review all the stuff. So very interesting and, and something to, to have in mind. The fifth extension that I wanted to show you is this one, Page Roller. This particular extension is pretty useful because it, it can help you to, I don't know, maybe measure in a web element in, in, in your website, right? And it is going to provide you with the real values in, in terms of or um, width, the, I don't know, the width, the height, the different sizes in your web element and can be useful to check that with against the different assets that you have or maybe you need a, a specific measure of this element, this can be pretty useful. So let's go ahead and take a look of how we can use it. So let's imagine that you need, I don't know, maybe, you need to know the, the width and the height of this web element, right? So you can come here and use the ruler extension. Let's, let's take a look. And let's imagine that you need to well, actually get the height and the width uh, with for actually for this word. And you can see that there is the width in pixels, uh, 73 pixels, right? And the height of 15 pixels. So it could be useful sometime if you need to check some kind of a scenario. Well, maybe a pixel perfect website, I don't know. Um, you can use this page roller extension for, well, actually facilitate your life. The next extension that I wanted to show you is this one, Lighthouse. This is pretty useful and actually it is part of the Chrome DevTools, but there is an extension. Basically, it is going to give you uh, some insights about your the performance of your website as soon as it is loaded. For example, right now I have this website, the saucedemo.com website that I usually use in this website to do some automation tests, as you probably know. Uh, <laughs> um, if I come here to the extensions part and I click on Lighthouse over here, it is gonna ask me if I want to generate a report, okay? I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna click on this and you're gonna see that it is telling me that waiting for Lighthouse results. What is happening here is that it is recollecting data uh, to see how well the website is loading what about the accessibility practices, the best practices in, in the website, if it has the correct SEO um, terms, right? If, if, if it has the meta tags correct and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And also we have this PWA that I'm not pretty sure what it is, but if we come here and check, um, it is saying that this checks the aspects of progressive web application. That's interesting, I didn't know they exist. 
but yeah it is it's 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 understandable okay and well as you can see the performance is going to be 94 in this case you can see that we have like different grades here from 0 to 49 it is it is a red performance it is not good also we have a, a yellow one from um, 50 to 89 right and also if it is going to be green if we have a 90 to 100 and in my case in this case right the, the website is is loading correctly the performance seems to be okay also we can see some metrics related to uh, the first content full paint the time to interactive the speed index it could be interesting statistics to evaluate if if the performance is low right we, we can have some insights from that also we have some images here uh, about the um, the different stages in the very first seconds of the website when it is loading how well it performs how the image is is loaded right and and that and that kind of stuff also we have some opportunities to improve in terms of performance um, for example, it is telling us that if we reduce the unused JavaScript, it is going to save 0.6 seconds, seconds, for example, right? So that's important and interesting, right? I highly recommend you to, to check this performance extension, right? It's, it's interesting and probably can help us to identify performance, accessibility, best practices, and, and more kind of opportunities to improve. And well, the, the last extension or trick that I wanted to show you, it is not an extension itself. It is a new feature that we have in Google Chrome. It is the recorder. It is pretty useful and interesting because now we can do or actually d d record the actions in a website and we can record it and replay this as many times as you need. Play with this website again, the saucedemo.com. This is a pretty basic looking, right? As you probably know. And if I enter the correct username and password, it's gonna be redirecting us to a kind of cart, right? That where, where the customers can buy stuff. Um, I'm gonna enter to the Chrome DevTools, right? And you can see that right now we have a recorder tab. In case it is not displayed for you, you can you have to come here, look for, I'm sorry, it, that, that was not the idea. You have to come here, look for um, more tools and look for recorder. This is, one, this is the way that you can access this experimental feature right now, okay? Um, if you want to record a new, um, kind of workflow right you can come here click on a start new recording let's call this recording success looking okay and i'm gonna click on the button of record okay i'm gonna enter the correct username in this case is standard user and then the correct password which is secret sauce okay let's see and if i click on login button on the login button you can see that now it is opening the the, the 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 card that i just told you before right so the idea here is to well stop the recording and you're gonna see that it has recorded all the different steps that i have done even a like double click here that it is not related with the with the workflow but it recorded the, the stuff as well <laughs> you can delete the the recording here right you can download a puppeter script Right, if you want to export it and, and customize it uh, in, in using JavaScript, probably right, and we can here uh, edit the, the recording name, also replay the, the the execution. You can see that it was working fine, and also uh, we can measure the performance. So if I do this, it is going to replay all this stuff, and it is going to display a kind of report. A performance report of what is happening right you can see here that we have a lot of statistics related with loading scripting rendering painting the milliseconds that it took uh, and and so on the call tree the button up the even log of, of what is happening there and a lot of stuff that you can use in case you need it right and this is pretty useful i think so um please let me know in the comment section if you appreciate this video if you like it and and if you do let me know in the comment section too because i can create more or actually bring more extensions that could help us with our testing or developer life okay so guys thank you very much subscribe make sure that you let a good like in this video click on the on the like button please and see you in the next one bye bye guys